So I found a nice little handful of maps in a pursuit of trying to find some other maps, but I was really happy with my discovery. These are really interesting. And this one here, all of these I'll be focusing on North America. And I think there's a lot to be revealed in these older maps. Really, really interesting. One of the first things we notice here is California being an island. And, you know, there are old legends that Nevada used to be occupied by a group of red-haired giants giants and a seafaring people a seafaring uh, giant race which doesn't make sense with our new landscape but now you can see in the old landscape it would make sense that Nevada actually had access to the sea and later for you know whatever reason whatever happened um, you know, this becomes connected and Nevada no longer has access to the sea. I think it would be about right here. But actually what I was looking for, and I did not find that particular map, and maybe I will before this uh, video is finished, but there were old maps that used to depict this portion this area that says parts unknown. Well, in older maps, it used to say parts unknown also, but also occupied by giants. And one was a French map that I saw a long time ago. And it said, um, you know, that this was an area of giants. And that's, in a, in a lot of maps of America, and we'll see some today, uh, you'll just see a, a cut-off section right here. I mean, you won't even see anything. This one is pretty interesting. I mean, we do see uh, a lot more than than some of the older maps, but yeah, you'll just see a complete void of even, you know, the whole northwest corner of America. And in this one, another thing that really caught my attention, and there's so much, it's it's really amazing, but it's actually this writing right here. The Baron Lahonen, in his first book, page 125, says that some of the Mozamilek nation told him that at the defluence of 150 leagues, their principal river empties itself into a salt lake 300 leagues in circumference, the mouth of which is about two leagues broad. That lower part of the river is adorned with six noble cities. Six noble cities, besides a hundred towns. Great and small, round that sort of sea, and that ye people call themselves Tahuglank. Tahuglank. Regardless, but what they're saying is that, yes, if you follow this river, it empties itself into a salt lake, a great salt lake of 300 leagues in circumference, and you have this amazing noble city, and they make the difference. Uh, they, they differentiate between, besides a hundred towns, a hundred towns are surrounding this, these six noble cities. And yet now this makes sense, you know, because when we look at, especially if you've seen another video of mine where I do ancient America, and it's mostly Google Earthing, and I spend a, a, a portion of time in around the Salt Lake, and you can see remnants of ancient cities all over the place, all over, including some buildings like the Great Salt palace, which somehow survived, and, and actually a lot of buildings survived in Salt Lake City, a lot of buildings that do not fit into the narrative, you know, the, the Mormon settlers arrived in Salt Lake City, 
really in, in 1860, and by 1900s you have glorious buildings that have the aging of 200 years old, at least, and really, really, really amazing. And now that we see this writing, how fascinating. The first time that I've seen a confirmation of six noble cities uh, surrounding the Salt Lake and a hundred towns. I mean, really amazing. But here we can see Illinois. Illinois is like Illinois. And this is obviously pre-America. I mean, America is New France here, the bulk of it. Over here we have New Scotland, Canada, Louisiana, New Mexico, and Mexico. The sea of the British Empire. So, this is great. You know, this is great because, you know, the older, the better. And so, even in this old map, we have Illinois. So, almost uh, showing that Illinois has some very, very old foundations. So, you know, there's so much more, and I hate to jump on, but let us... You know, this is clearly old, and, you know, so old that... So here, again, as a, as a point of reference, I always like to try to find the Colorado River. And here I'm going to say this is the Colorado. Here even Yuma, Arizona, it, it says Yuma, you know, way before it was Arizona. So we can follow the Colorado up, and here we would have the green and the Colorado. I'm imagining. A little distorted, of course. And maybe this is not the Salt Lake. And you see now this is not an island anymore. There's no sailing through the Gulf of Mexico and back out. And... But we have Santa Barbara. How interesting. We have Santa Barbara, San Clemente, San Francisco, Saint Francisco back then. And... Oh, here we go. 1795. So, yes. Excellent. So this is, you know, within, let's say, 25 years, 20 years after America is formed. And yet, uh, okay, okay, we have a little bit of establishment here. And now we have Illinois. Naturally, if it's been formed as a state, we're going to have the names that we recognize. With this map, what I noticed... Here you can see again, like I was talking about, the missing chunk of land. I mean, again, because I wish I could find the map that showed. But yeah, a region inhabited by giants. So nobody messed around here. Nobody messed around. You know, you had your areas, it was probably understood. The giants left the people alone over here. Here it appears as if we have Greenland ice free. But yeah, really interesting. Ice free. And all of this, in fact, ice-free. And Florida is always depicted in the old maps. So here, this is really interesting on the flat Earth level. Uh, we don't call the oceans the Pacific and the Atlantic. We call it Mer du Nord, the ocean of the north. Mare Septembrionale, which is really interesting. So you, you get that a lot. This reminds me of the the old people, and oftentimes up here in the North Pole, you see here Septem Septentrio. So yeah, this seems to be Septentrionale. So this this seems to be something with the old world. To me, it sounds very much like S September. I mean, the only thing we get close to it, but yet that must be rooted in this uh, this old word that seems to be associated usually with the northern regions. And Sud Carol, you see here, South Carolina is already, but yet they're written in French. This seems to be pre America, still uh, Canada or New France. And Florida is always Florida. I mean, going way back to the oldest maps we can see, Florida is always Florida. So, again, Mar del Zur, this is going to be not French, but I can tell this is the Ocean of the South. And here we have Mar del Nord. 
obviously the ocean of the north. America septentrional, and I'm sure there's a nalis somewhere. Here we go, nalis. So yes, America. It's almost like uh, you know, if septentrionalis is up here, typically it's the northern region. So this is almost like southern septentrionalis. Really interesting, and in that you have this area that is typically depicted in older maps as being inhabited by giants, and how you know the giants would have come from the north. It looks like we potentially can see Salt Lake here. Oh, and by the way, whenever we are talking about a salt lake or a salt crater, or a, to me, this is uh, this is a weapon, you know, that creates the water to be salty, um, just like Sodom and Gomorrah and the Dead Sea in Israel. You know, essentially, we do have a story that tells us uh, it was it was hit by fire and brimstone and we're left with a salty sea and i think uh, we see the same thing with salt lake we have here what is being called the mapa de los estados unidos so the united states a map of the united states do mexico and what's going on here you know let me sorry let me make this bigger what is going on here with a map of the united states of mexico in 1847 and what are these you know what are these are these peaks really interesting let's move on so what i noticed about this one was the seeming missingness of the Great Lakes. And here, Septem Septentrio. And this, I believe, is that lake that we see way at the top of the... We usually see that way at the top here. So here we go. But regardless, yes, I don't see the Great Lakes as if they haven't been formed. And here we go. Now here is Shilaga. Shilaga, which I think, you know, Chicago gets its name from, but again, we don't have the lake yet. And one of my commenters, he had beautiful um, uh, definitions of, of what they, these meant. And Laga, Laga, I believe, meant town, uh, and she meant large. So this was large town. And right here, depicting this one. So here's a lot of smaller towns, but this was large towns. So Chicago and Shilaga, and we'll see a lot of other uh, pronunciations of it, but always depicting, I believe, the same place was this town. So look at all of these towns. These would have been grand and glorious port towns. And I think recently, and I want to touch on this a little bit later in the video if I have time, but Conspiracy R Us did a wonderful piece and depicting all of the bomb sites in the Carolinas. And look here, look at the towns by the Carolinas. You know, significant again. Old map, pre-America, this is still New France, and look at the towns. And now this seems to have a correlation. If we saw the blast marks that he was showing us on, you know, various images, here we go. These are the ancient towns. And here again, great, great lakes suddenly form that aren't here. Well, great lakes. Here's one great lake right here. Kaboom. Probably wiped out all of these in one shot. And uh, Chicago seems to have just serious antiquitech and ancient architecture and layouts of the rivers and the waterfronts. And clearly to me, older, just like we've been showing in, uh, you know, a lot of these videos and, and a lot of creators have been showing, Chicago is no exception. And I've been wanting to just get a whole bunch of pictures depicting Chicago alone. But here again, we do see the cities without the Great Lakes 
and uh, you know a lot of Chicago was preserved but yet uh, clearly a lot wasn't and even here this Hotchella we see that a lot so Hotchella Hotch Gelaga so again Laga town Shilaga town now whose language is this I don't know I don't know so that's going to be like a large mountain maybe you know really interesting and uh, so much and again look at the towns look at Mexico I mean look look how inhabited Mexico is I mean you know it's as if uh, you know perhaps some of these pyramids even like uh, perhaps they were still going on in uh, Chihuahua and uh, you know you have pyramids here and yes were these such old ruins or or was a lot of these ruins still still being occupied places where we now see ruins and uh, places that are very remote in some cases well they certainly weren't ruins in these pictures I mean we can go clear down to South America and Peru and Look at this. I mean, look at, look at the population in Peru in, in, in kind of the remote areas. So absolutely fascinating. And now where we see great deserts, you know, great deserts and the same thing up here. This one is really interesting. Again, showing the missing piece, America. And look how it's really just showing wild animals and maybe just depicting the wild but really, I think, depicting the mystery, because they have no idea. Now, here we do see the Great Lake, if I'm seeing that correctly. And it looks like a complete reorientation of what we were seeing in earlier maps. California appears to be an island again, but maybe they just didn't know again, because the ancient race occupied this northern west region, and... and Really, you probably weren't able to even explore up here. Now, this map says around 1600. It actually said around 1600, as if there's no actual knowledge of this date. And this one seems really old. I mean, we have uh, what looks like Greenland being called Meta Incognita. Really interesting. Uh, maybe this is a little portion of Iceland, I don't know. Uh, Arcticus. So we are seeing a complete connection here with the North Polar region. But what caught my eye about this map, although there are tons of anomalous things, is this kind of railroad track right here. And this is as much as I can zoom in, but this railroad track right here, really interesting. Of course, everything is laid out completely different now, but what I noticed is. Uh, the orientation of the Great Lakes, or maybe the lack of their greatness, this appears, you know, with its right angles, almost artificial, and especially this train tracky looking thing here. I don't know what kind of tech is this. What is this? And we really see a, a, a build out of civilization along the coast in this old map, and. I have seen a ton, you know, of star forts along here. I mean, this is like Star Fort Central. And this is artificial coastline central. I mean, we have a reshaping of the coastline. And I think, you know, that may be what we're seeing here. And so, yeah, the coastline to me seems very artificial. Very, very artificial. And, you know, you, you can see here. Now, of course, Google is playing tricks here again. And we're not getting a full, clear image. I think that what we can see is similar to what I was talking about earlier. And perhaps the star fortiness. If you look carefully, this whole, you know, it's as if... All of this was Star 40, you know, and it's been rounded off. The corners and the definition has been rounded off to where it's almost not apparent, but you can make it out, I think. 
But I think what we have is artificial patterns here. And also artificial sandbars. Now these sandbars, they, they absolutely seem artificial to me. And, you know, the, the feat of engineering and the amount of money and, I don't know, who, who allocated funds to build a sandbar along the entire coast of the United States and a beautiful sandbar with with uh, port entryways and I never heard uh, about the great sandbar creations and even this tunnel look how interesting this tunnel I mean who you know it was so important to make a tunnel across this is a this is again a feat of absolute engineering I want to end with these two little things here as I was preparing to look at the coast I couldn't help but notice these tracks these tracks here these tracks led me you know pretty much led me on a small quest and I followed them and they almost look like the tracks in Peru in my last video that we see along the mountainside, you know, enormous, enormous tracks. And it should be worth noting that this is blurred out. This is blurred out, and yet we see little pyramid tops, and it is absolutely blurred out, and you can see little dots around here. So here we, we definitely have some buried, not buried, I just blurred out. We definitely see traces of civilization along with these tracks. And now I'm just going to jump over here and follow the tracks a little bit more, which I couldn't help but doing. They run all over the place, and this is just really, really interesting. I mean, look at this one zigzagging. I mean, there is no chance that this is natural. And here I followed the track to this beautiful island, you know, and... I said, what is this island? And the tracks all intersect here. And, uh, well, it, it turns out that this is Bermuda. It looks like a mountaintop poking up, you know, in, in, times, of, uh, in times of old. This was clearly a, a mountain, and this was a... And, and now we can see maybe all roads, you know, led to here, and this was a, a center. And maybe this was Atlantis, and... and this is, uh, you know, with the rising of the ocean. This gets mostly buried. And what do we have here? I mean, f this would just be a, a study. And again, what will Google really let us see? But uh, right away we can see, you know, I don't know. Uh, and I'm just going to finish up with, uh, this is a triangle. You know, all these tracks lead to this triangle. And, you know, I don't know, maybe people knew this, and, uh, but I didn't. And sure enough, there is a triangle in Bermuda. And here it is, you know, surrounded by ancient tech all over the place. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.